Hallelujah. Bwana asifiwe. It's great to see all of you on a Sunday service. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's celebrate this amazing team. Amen. Now let's descend to the comfort of our seats. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Hii church ni poa. <laughs> Ukisimama hapa unaona mpaka nje. <laughs> Bwana asifiwe. I really count it a privilege to be here this day. And I bless God for um, this great opportunity. My name is Millicent Kaunda. I'm married to one husband who is a man. I am a mother of two young adults, a son and a daughter. And I'm a member of this church. God has if you <laughs> that is for the sake of those who are new and I can see so many new faces. That's why I needed to introduce myself in that way. I come from a, a neighborhood where what wana tumaga salamu. Bwana asifiwe. <laughs> so nilitumwa na salamu na wachungaji wawili wale niliwaona asubuhi. That is Pastor Edward Mulwa says hello. And Pastor Kaunda says hello. Amen. Bwana asifiwe sana. I really want to thank God for this opportunity to come and bring forth the word of the Lord. And uh, in the month of June in the month of June, we began on a topic, giving. And last week, we were looking at uh, stewardship. Last week, we looked at stewardship. Reverend Beatrice was taking us through in this place. At the main campus, we had a guest speaker, Reverend Kiroko, who also took us through stewardship. And so today, we want to look at key principles on giving the key principles on giving. I don't know whether you've ever wondered that pastors keep standing from one altar to another and they keep telling you that if you give, you will prosper. But you have been giving and giving, that is in case you've been faithful, giving and giving, but there has been no results. And so you get to a point where you tend to feel these pastors could be lying or there's something that is not adding up. It is possible to give and give and give and not prosper. And I will tell you why in a short while. Bona sifiwe. And that's why we want to look at the principles of giving. The principles of giving. About two weeks ago, I went to visit a friend of mine uh, who had gotten a baby. And so I went with a basket. Kwetwa tukwagi na kiondo because we don't carry things on our backs. Mwana sefiwe. Tunazibeba wapi? Kwa kichua. Hiyo ya back, we found in Nairobi. <laughs> yes, so we have baskets. We don't have kiondos, but they are the equivalent of kiondos. So I organized my basket, put a few things as the Lord enabled me, and I went to see my friend. And uh, we went to hold the baby. Among the kikuyus, nasikia wakiita kufanya nini mwana? So I went to hold the baby. When time came for us to leave, she emptied the basket that I had carried to her. She emptied it into her kitchen, then got into her kitchen and placed a few other items in the basket and brought it to me. Mwana sifiwe. Because in the African culture, when someone brings you a basket, it doesn't go back empty. Are we together? It doesn't go back empty. And actually, it's in all communities in Kenya. I may not talk about other communities out of Kenya. But in all communities in Kenya, when a basket comes your way, you have to do what? To keep filling it so that it can go back. Now, the way you will fill it is determined by your ability. 
Am I right? If it's a person who is way much more um, endowed than you are, they will ensure that they showcase their endowment by undoing what you did. They put more. Sindio, they put more. I've seen that when we've gone for our ratios. Women normally organize, especially in Kikuyu land, they organize themselves and they buy, buy, buy. By the time they are coming back, they are carrying um, most likely more than they took to the girl's parents, you know? Because that is the tradition in the African society. Now, when you have been uh, told that you are going to present yourself before a person who is mightier than you are. Do you walk standing? If today Bishop invited you into his house, where were two? Utaenda kama umesimama hivi. It will really trouble you. Am I right? So that you ensure you have carried something while going to visit him. Actually, if you walked into his house empty-handed, there would be something very wrong with your mind. Sini ukweli. Utatafuta ata kama ni kitu kidogo aje, but you'll have a package as you're going into his house. If today you are invited into state house by whichever president, whichever president, so I know why I'm saying that. <laughs> by whichever president, not necessarily the current president, whoever, invited you to state house so that you can go and have a discussion with them, you will definitely carry something, a gift that you want to leave in that place. And so even as we are talking about giving, giving is not a foreign thing in the African traditional society. It is something that we are used to doing from time to time. Our cultures dictate that we become givers from time to time. And that's why the Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, I think it's verse 16 to 17, we can be able to read that. Deuteronomy, chapter 16. Mm -hmm. From verse 16, we'll just read verse 16. What does it say? Can we read together? All your males are to appear three times a year before the Lord, your God, in the place he chooses. At the festival of unleavened bread, the festival of weeks, and the festival of booths. No one is to appear before the Lord empty-handed. Can we repeat the last part? No one is to appear before the Lord empty-handed. A story is told in the Bible, in the book of Exodus, the time when Moses was sent to go and deliver the Israelites. And he goes to Pharaoh and he speaks with Pharaoh and tells Pharaoh, the Lord has said, let my people go so that they may worship me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh refuses at, uh, at some point, but later on when he agrees, he says, let them go, but only the men will go. Then when the pressure mounts, he says, let them go, but only the men and their wives will go. Let them go, but only the people will go. Leave your animals in this place. Leave your resources in this place. And remember, where a man's treasure is, there the heart is also. So Pharaoh already knew that if they leave their treasures, in Egypt, they will not go forever. They will still keep turning back and wanting to come and pick that which they left in the land of Egypt. And you know many times, even as we serve the Lord in the current dispensation, the enemy would want us to come into the house of the Lord, to worship the Lord, to come into places of worship. He'd want us to come with our children. He wants us to come with our spouses, but he wants us to leave our wallets home. Turn to your neighbor, ask them, did you come with your wallet? Buona sifiwe. 
Moses is telling Pharaoh that the reason we have to carry everything is because we do not know what the Lord will require of us to sacrifice. And even today as we came into this place, we do not know what the Lord is going to require of you or to require of me to do what? To sacrifice. And hence, we need to always come with literally everything that belongs to us. As we say, I surrender all, withholding nothing. We are actually withholding nothing. And so as we are looking at the key principles... The principle number one, never appear before the king empty-handed. Never appear before the king empty-handed. When we look at the scriptures in the book of Matthew chapter 2 from verse 1. We can read that. Matthew chapter 2 from verse 1. This is the story of the... The kings that came from the east, this is what the Bible says, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, wise men from the east arrived unexpectedly in Jerusalem, saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. Go to verse 11. Entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and falling to their knees, they worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. These kings, these wise men, there are other versions that also refer to them as kings. And by the way, they were not three kings. I don't know where we got the idea that they were three. Amani kwa sababu, the gifts were three. Gold, frankincense, and maya. So we imagine kila moja alikuja kame beba moja. Maybe that's where we got the idea that they were three. They were not three. The Bible only says they were wise men. Maybe they were three, maybe they were two, maybe they were six. We do not know how many they were. But they saw a star because there were people who were good at studying stars. They saw a star and they discovered that there was a star of a king, a star that was extraordinary. And so they decided that they are going to take a walk. They are going to take a journey. The journey was far so that they can go and worship the king. Most of us today have come from various places. We have those who are coming from Zimmerman down there. Some people are coming from up here. Others are coming from diaspora. But all of them walked into this house this morning. Why? Because they want to worship the king. Amen. We have been led in a time of powerful worship. We have lifted our hands. We have knelt down. But even after we've lifted our hands and have knelt down, it is expected of us that now we will reach into our treasury and continue worshiping the Lord. Hallelujah. So never appear before the king empty handed. This king was still young, he was still a baby, but it warranted kings from a far land to come and worship him because they knew that this king, though he looked very young, though he was a baby, he had left glories in heaven. He was way much more endured than the kings that came to worship him. This morning we have come, some of us have come driving, some of us have come walking, whichever way you came, there is one thing that is for sure, we have a king who is more endowed than any one of us here. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. The Bible says that silver and gold belong to him. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, chapter 24, verse 1, the earth and its fullness thereof belong to the Lord, including those inhabitants, you and I, we all belong to the Lord. This is a king who owns the entire universe, and therefore he is not shaken by your one million. He is not shaken by your 10,000. That does not bother him. He has everything. When I was he is not like the human beings that we are, that when we look at you, tunakutosha nisha, then we want to look at your offering, um, your, your envelope, we see how much are you giving in form of time. That one does not steward him. He has everything. And he's the king we came to worship this morning. 
Hallelujah. And so what he expects of you and I is that we will walk into his presence with our hearts open for him, but with also our wallets open for him. Hallelujah. He is a king whom you cannot hide anything from. He is all-knowing. I don't know. Many times when you walk into churches and spouses are seated together, and at a foot at spouses' side, Hey, when they are seated together, like you see, you see, you wazuri, you see, you see, you wazuri. When it's time for offering, unona mzee, mama amekati uketi huku, unona mzee amefanya hivi. Awa wako hapa, sindio? Ni wakule kuingine. Now, let me tell you, you cannot do that to Jesus Christ because he knows he knows nini iko kwa mfuko wako. He actually knows even that which is in the bank today. No wonder when he was seated at the treasury, when people came giving offerings, you know Jesus did not sit in the big seats that are normally placed for big people in the church. He sat hapa. Alikuja kaka hapa. Bwana asifiwe. Na akawa anaangalia people coming in to do what? To give their tithes, to give their offerings. Why did he sit there? Because he knows if you are able to give of your finances, then you love him surely. It is one thing to say, oh Lord, you know I love you. But it is another to actually love him with everything that you have. One is as if you so he sat there. And I can imagine if it was the current church in the current age, someone came with 1,000 and was very excited as they were walking, wanting everybody to see and bless him. You know? But there was a woman who did not have much. She gave all that she had and it was two cents. And she came praising the Lord joyfully and put it inside. And Jesus says, this woman has given more than everyone else here. Meaning, God recognizes any gift according to your ability. For someone, your 1,000 ni change. But for this woman, that was all she had. And so what are we saying? We are saying, never appear before a king empty-handed. And just like you normally plan when you're going to see the babies that are born, before you walk into the church, plan what you're going to give as an offering. Hallelujah. Isifike wakati wa offering na tithe, umetafuta kila mahali, you know, unashanga. And for, thank God nowadays we do not have the, um, now what were they called? The plastic bags. Kikuyus called them nyore. Kwetu tulukwa tunazita nini juwala. You know, until in the fika wakati wa offerings, you start hearing noise because people are trying to look for offerings. You plan because you are going to present yourself before a king. So principle number one, never appear before a king. Empty handed. Number two that you need to understand, God owns everything including you, including that business that has been making you feel like, you know, I am very hardworking, including that one. God owns everything. He literally owns everything. Just like we read in Psalms chapter 24, verse 1. And you know, the thought that God's, oh, God owns everything will make you not hold anything from him. Because after all, including Wewe, you are God's. You're his. That income that he gave you, it is about him. And so there's nothing you will hide whatsoever. Because God owns everything. And it's because he owns everything, he will give to us as per the assignments that he has assigned for us. For some people, he will give them a higher income. Why? Because their assignments are greater. 
to some, he will give them a small income because their assignments are also small. And in most cases, the assignment that we have, that money that we are given, it's not just for us to consume, but for us to be able to fulfill the assignment that God has for us. In the book of Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, um, after Abraham is called out, the Bible says that I will bless you so that you can be a blessing. So that which you've been given is so that you can be a blessing, so that you can be a kingdom financier. Many times when we call out financiers, you look for someone else, you look at your neighbor. Let me announce it to you today that all of us have been called to be kingdom financiers. And you finance according to your ability. Number three, we have been called to become faithful stewards. Faithful stewards. The Bible says in the book of First Corinthians chapter 4 verse 2, moreover it is required in a steward that one be found faithful. You remember the story of the parables in Matthew chapter 25. One was given five talents. The other one was given two talents. And there was one who was given one talent. Now, according to their abilities. God knew that if I give this one one talent, he has the ability to make this multiply. And who is a steward? When we are talking about faithful stewardship, a steward is a person who takes care of another one's property. So everything that you own, sio yako, si tumesema ni ya mungu, you are just taking care of it on behalf of God. The other thing that I normally uh, say a steward is, a steward is an equivalent of a caretaker in a plot. That's a steward. And so when a landlord gives a plot to a steward or to a caretaker, the expectation is that this caretaker will make sure that plot is clean, everything is done, rent is being paid. In case the rent is increased, it's being paid. And the expectation is that this property will be in a better state than when it was given to them. That is what God is expecting of you and I. One as if you because we will one day give an account. We will one day give an account of that which he has given you and that which he has given me. Number four. Four. <laughs> we are being called to generosity. We are being called to generosity. I've been saying this one thing, that giving is a principle. Giving is a principle. And it's the principle that we plug into that will cause us to prosper. Can I repeat that? Giving is the principle which if we plug into, we prosper. It is the principle that God has given. Just like when you're finding the area of a circle, it is pi r. Hatam Levi, aki calculate pi r squared, atapata area of a. Muindi, aki calculate the area of a circle with pi r squared, atapata the area of. A circle. In other words, you do not need to sit down when you're told to calculate the area of a circle. You don't need to sit down and begin speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. You just plug into the formula and it works. And that is the same thing with the principle of giving. Whoever it is that puts it into practice will get the results therein. Hallelujah. We'll get the results. No wonder in the European countries, in America, they are prosperous. Why did they prosper? Because they are generous. Hallelujah. 
You know, the Africans, when they saw the Wazungus, the first thing that came into their mind, even right now, when an African sees a Muzungu, and those Africans are not here because we have been set free. Bona sifiwe, our to me, who are set free. But most of them that are out there, you see a white skinned man and you begin thinking, I can start a children's home. You know? You begin thinking, I can start an NGO. Because you're looking at this man and you're thinking, they can finance me. How about us turning it around so that people will be looking at members of DCIKZ and they are thinking, I can start a children's home. Bonus if you And you know the difference is, when you start that children's home, this man will go and work, 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 had save attempts to even go with one meal in the U.S. so that they can finance this African. And as soon as that money comes, definitely the people who receive it will say, oh, God bless so and so. God bless that man. God, and you know what? God watches his word to perform it. God will bless them. So they'll keep on being blessed, being blessed because they are giving, they are giving, they are giving. But you and I who are receiving, we are not receiving any blessing. It is time to turn it around. So God is calling us into a time of turning around things in our dispensation by having a generous heart. I was telling people at the main campus, by God's grace, I happened to visit uh, Dubai early this year. And a few things I saw. Number one, I did not see a madman on the streets or a beggar. Mimi nilitafuta si kuona. Hakuna. You know? Saidia maskini, hakuna. I never saw that. But when I sought to ask, because I went back to the hotel and I was asking that guy at the reception why there are no beggars, and this is what he said. It is because in our religion, it is an insult to have a beggar when you, you are eating to your fill. So we ensure we feed them. We ensure they are housed. We ensure they are clothed. And no wonder in that nation they are living large. large. <laughs> they are living large. What do I mean by large? You walk there, you want to get into an Uber. Matatu, uh, not Matatu, Uber. You want a taxi. Hmm? What you will get are the likes of um, Tesla. You'll get uh, Mercedes G-Wagon. Hizo ndizo Uber. Why? Because they have plugged into a principle that is in the word of God and they have gotten results. When we plug in, we get results. I will begin plugging in. Now, God is, like we've said, God is expecting us to just give a tenth, a tithe, ten percent of your income. Not of your neighbors, ten percent of your income. If your income is a thousand shillings, what is ten percent? If your income is one million, what is ten percent? A hundred thousand. You just give a tenth of your income, not your neighbor's income. Now, many times, I say that, tell us why we don't um, prosper, we don't get results. Many times we give the 10% and then we go back and sit down and wait to see miracles happen without us putting something into practice. Once you have given the 10%, how much are you left with? 90%. Now, for you to prosper after you have given the 10% and the offerings and everything, and we'll, tell, we'll be looking at how do we give offerings, after you have given that and you're left with the 90%, then whatever you will do with the 90% determines whether you will prosper or not. Oh, yeah. if you. And at that juncture, I want to say this. That prayer does not eradicate poverty. 
Bado mimi ni mchungaji bwana asifiwe. <laughs> Prayer does not do what? Eradicate poverty. You might fast all you want. Fast 100 days if you want. Fast 40 days and nights if you want. But if you do not put certain principles in place, you will sleep hungry and God will still be God. Tunaelewana hapo. And so, what are you going to do with the 90% that you are left with? That is where the rubber touches the road. Those ladies and a few men who were there last Sunday when uh, we had DOI, there's something that we were reminded. That after you've given your 10% or whatever percentage you've decided that you want to tithe on, that, uh, uh, that uh, 10% you've given, then 90%, you take 20% and save. Bona sifiwe. You save 20 percent. You save 20 percent. So you have the 90 percent that has been left with you. So you metu ten. Si tuko pamoja. Mwaka wa threshing what? There are certain mountains that we must thresh. And we are not going to thresh them in an ignorant manner. Ah uh ah. -uh. God is giving us financial intelligence and spiritual intelligence. After you have given the 10%, the next thing that you are going to do, this is another principle here, develop a budget. Develop a budget. Do you know my budget? Muliza budget yako imeandiko ama iko kwa akili. <laughs> Develop a budget. Now, how does your budget look like? In your budget, start at the top. Sitaidu shato a tithe. You are to ongeagi bariake bonus if you Start with your savings because your savings is it's like you are paying yourself fast. Bonus if you Start with your savings because your savings are your pay. Many times we want to pay everyone else. We are paying the landlord, we are paying the supermarket, we are paying the petrol station, we are paying everyone else. But you who worked so hard, you forget to pay yourself. It is time we start with us. You pay yourself 20% and put it where? in a savings account. Now, this 20%, do not save it in a place where you can easily access it. Tunasema wacha niweke hapa kwa mpesa. Alafu, wewe ni dada kama mimi umetembea, umeona kakiatu, by the way, eh? Umeona kakiatu kazuru, nasema, ile pesa nilikuwa nimesave, wacha nika, ah, ah. Save it in a place where you cannot access it easily. What are some of these places? You can decide to, in, to, to put it in a money market. A place like Britam, CIC, they have money markets where you can be contributing every month. You can contribute every month. The good thing with them is that it will even give you an interest at some point. But you wezi amuka leo useme mimi ni menda Britam, nataka pesa yangu. So it helps you to be Disciplined. However small, because haba na haba ujaza kibaba. Put it in there so long as it is 20%. Then the next thing in your budget should be your house rent. Your house rent. It's very easy for your house to be locked, but it's very hard for you to sleep hungry. Because utaenda kwa mama nani, atakugawia unga yake. But ukienda kwa mama nani, unataka rent, hata kulipia. So ensure the second thing you're going to do is that you're going to pay your rent. Now this rent also, you need to pay a house that is within your means. I know we are men and women of faith. And I'm a woman of faith. But my prayer is that we will not take faith too far. What do I mean? You're earning 20,000. 
you have paid 2,000 as um, tithes. Then you have paid 4,000 for your savings. How much has been left? 14. Am I right? 14,000. Now this 14,000, you know me, I'm a woman of great faith. <laughs> I am going to look for a house that is worth 10,000. My friend. Eh? You won't even have transport to go to work. Look for a house that is within your limit. After you have put on in every other aspect, you can be able to pay that rent and live well. Bona sifiwe. And let me tell you, many times, kile kina tusumbua ni class and status. Sindio, status. But as I'm standing here today, are you able to know how much I'm paying for my house? Can I tell you something? Nobody cares about how much you pay for your rent. <laughs> Nobody cares. So you better live within your means. Still within the budget. Budget for food items that you can afford. The fact that your neighbor na kulaga nyamachoma kila siku, mse, kula ile unaweza. Now, nyama or beef na beans, both are thank you. <laughs> both are proteins. And as we are seated here looking awesome, nobody can tell whether yesterday you ate dengu ama ulikula kuku. So live within your means. That does not mean you're not a woman or a man of faith. It only means that you're a wise man or a wise woman. We are still looking at the 90%. So budget. Budget for transport. If you can't afford an Uber, go buy Matatu. Bonasifiwe. If fuel has become very expensive, before you purchase that car, you used to walk. Walk. It's even healthy. Bonasifiwe. <laughs> It's even what? Healthy. And especially in this season when we are all screaming finance bill. We must learn how to live. Because the Bible says the just shall live by? Eh. So there are days you will park your vehicle and you will walk to work. There are days you will take a matatu because when you go with this vehicle to town in case you're working in town, apart from just the fuel, we also have the parking levy. You, that parking levy, I don't, is it 300 or 400 shillings? Need 300 shillings in town. That 300 is enough for my house breakfast and supper. Bonasifiwe. Nikienda pale gedorai. Sinunui nyanya ya mta, ninafinya ninaenda githurai. Bwana sifiwe. Now instead of buying a tomato for 10 bob, mimi ninaenda kupata tomato badala kununua tomato moja 10 bob. I'm able to go to githurai and I get things at a cheap rate. Bwana sifiwe. So buy food items that you can afford and avoid kununua kutoka kwa buffet za supermarket. Hallelujah. Are we talking? By the way, uh, but these are the realities of life. Hmm? So look for a way of buying things cheaply. Avoid wadada bonus if you were. Avoid pressurizing your husband at kila sikum takum nenda kunwa chapati muitu. Learn to cook the chapatis at home. And if you do not know how to cook them, do look for a woman here. That's why we are a church family. Let them teach you how to make those things and eat at home. The 90%. So budget and live within your means. Budget and stick to the budget. Budget including how much you are putting aside to give for compassion. Someone has passed on. Let it not be impulse. 
have it in your budget that this month I can only be able to give 2,000 for my compassion. So, utakuwa unatoa kidogo kidogo. Ikiisha, imeisha. Sinikweli. Imeisha. Sasa utenda kutoa wapi na imeisha. It is finished. So, budget for all those eventualities. The other thing is, eliminate debt. Mwana sifiwe. Eliminate debt. These are still principles of giving. Eliminate debt. We are living in the age of technology and digital lending and everything. So, ukikosa kitu kidogo umeenda tala. Si tunajua tala. Umechukua mkopo tala. Umechukua mkopo mshwari. You know, umechukua mkopo okoa jahazi because you wanted to talk with a friend. And so when Pastor Millicent wants to bless you, you tell usitume kwa simu. <laughs> you know, itakuluo. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. <laughs> Avoid debt. Actually, allow me to use this word. It is bad manners to borrow for consumption. Hallelujah. It's bad manners to borrow for what? For consumption. If you must borrow, then it should be for investment. And it's an investment you have sat down, you have calculated your return on that investment, which the, the return on the investment should be higher than the inflation rate and higher than the interest that you're being charged. One is what if you Bado sisi ni marafiki. Nitarudi sha hilo. Mtaambiwa aenda kabisa. Praise the name of the Lord. So what we are saying is eliminate eliminate debt. Forget about status. Status aita tusaidia Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Eliminate debt. Debt can hinder your ability to be a faithful steward of your finances. Strive to reduce and eliminate debt by committing to a debt-free lifestyle. You could be here, and you're looking at me and saying, but pasi tayari, niko kwa madeni. Then you need to have an action plan on how to get out of that debt. Professor taught us one thing, Professor Kuria taught us one thing, I think it was two years ago, that really liberated me. That each and every person should have at least seven streams of income. Seven streams of income. Umeajiriwa, that should not be your only source of income. Hallelujah. I know tumezoea, tumekua tukiubiri, tunaubiri, I receive in Jesus' name. Today it is not receiving. Today it is going down to the basics and putting things into practice. For us to survive in the Kenya that we have right now. We do not know whether by Tuesday they will pass the finance. Assuming they pass it. We are praying that it doesn't pass. But assuming they pass it, how will we survive? We need to learn how to maneuver our ways. So you need what we normally call a side hustle. And some of the side hustles can be begun with part of your 90%. It can be begun. Some of the side hustles you can actually do through your phone. So that instead of scrolling, I don't know whether you've ever looked at your phone, um, <laughs> there's something my son put for me in my phone that at, the, at every Friday in Anionyesha, we may spend this number of hours screen time. The first time I saw it, I was like, what? Three hours screen time. I started deliberately working towards reducing it. Now, if this three hours screen time is giving you an extra income, then so be it. But if it, these three hours you are spending scrolling Facebook, Facebook, eh? na TikTok, 
wanasifiwe TikTok sikuizi tu si, si vijana peke yake wanaingia na kucheka unacheka the whole night mpaka unalala one <laughs> yet the person whom you are laughing about this person whose TikTok you are watching is earning money na wewe ni kucheka tu and you are earning nothing my friend something needs to be done Bona sifiwe. Why if you love TikTok, why don't you go if you are an older generation like Mimi, uende to your children waulize, how can I get into TikTok to market my products? Now that one will be a positive thing when you are spending time on your screen. So look for a side hustle. Look for a side hustle. Hallelujah. Bona sifiwe. sifiwe. I can see my time is spent. And so nataka nimalizie mahali. <laughs> so we are eliminating debt and we are looking for side hustles. Mm -hmm. Realize the final one. Realize that biblical giving is spiritual, not circumstantial. And we read 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 1 to 2. We are to be giving even when it's not convenient to give to the Lord what already belongs to him, even during difficult times, yeah, the difficulties that we may be facing. We want you to know, brothers, by the grace of God granted to the churches of Macedonia, during a severe testing by affliction, their abundance of joy and their deep poverty overflowed into the wealth of their generosity. These people are going through a hard time. I read this and many times I think corona period. That was the hardest time we faced. I read this and I'm thinking the economy of Kenya now. It is a hard time. But still, scripture says that they gave. They gave. So you give, not just when things are good, but you give even when things are not good. And God will come through by giving you divine ideas. And like I said, I'm winding up now. Like I said, when you are giving, you give what you had planned from the beginning before you came into the church. You already planned today, Ninenda Kutoa, offering here this much, and this is my tithe. We do not give because a pastor has manipulated you. Can I repeat that? Ati nimekuja hapa hivi. Ama nimeleta mnigeria mwingine hapa. Amesimama. Alafu anakuja kusema, you know, I can see a hundred people. You have a hundred thousand in your accounts. The Lord is saying, bring it, bring it. And you come running, bringing it. Now that is manipulation. And manipulation is witchcraft. Wanesu asifiwe. If you will have planned on what to give on that particular day, you give even when the pastor has not said anything or whoever was preaching here has not said anything at all. I normally say this one thing. I refuse to be manipulated. And so if they are seeing a hundred people with a hundred thousand, let them continue seeing what I had prayed and I had agreed with God I'm going to give. That is what I will give. Bwanaiswasifiwe. Because God is my father. If he wanted me to give that 100,000, he would have spoken to me way at home when I was praying. So do not yield to manipulation. Umeskia, Bishop has been asking for, um, for us to plant for the cathedral. But we are so hard in planting, then you walk into town because some Nigeria or some Ghanaian has come. And because they are manipulated, you empty your account. That is an error. It is an error. And errors are normally corrected. And so what have we said? Never appear before a king empty-handed. Hallelujah. Number two, we have said that God owns everything. Am I right? Uh -huh. Number three, we have said that we've been called to be faithful stewards. Number four, we have been called to generosity. And then we have looked at a few things that can help us yield results after we have given. We have talked of budgeting. Then we have said we are eliminating debt as Christians. In any case, the Bible says that we shall be lenders, not borrowers. 
What took us to the place of borrowing? May God help us. We should be lenders. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise and we give you honor because you're faithful. Thank you, Jehovah God, for even talking to us today. And Lord, I pray that even as we put these principles into work, oh God, you're going to help us get results in the mighty name of Jesus. We want to thank you and we want to bless you, Abba Father, because we know that you are a good God. Maybe you're here and you're wondering about giving. The first giving that the Lord expects of you is for you to give your life to him. Scripture says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added to you. And so these things that we are talking about are additives, but you need to first and foremost seek the kingdom of God. You are here, you'd like to give your life to Jesus Christ. You could just lift your hands, I'll pray for you wherever you are, if you're here. Amen. Or maybe you're here, but you've been saying, me, I budget in my head. And at the end of the day, you end up with more month than money. And you're wondering, where did I take my money? When the house girl comes to you and they tell you, gas imeisha, unashanga, kwanini imeisha sahi, you're becoming irritable. Why? Because you have more month than money. Simply because you've not been budgeting. If you're that person, I want to request you to rise up that God would give you the grace to be able to plan your finances properly. Just rise up, we pray together. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. This is as if we are saying, Lord, teach us how to manage our finances. Lord, teach us how to manage our finances. And God is a good teacher. He will teach us. Because we are getting into a dispensation where the wealth of the righteous that has been stored, the wealth of the wicked that has been stored up for the righteous will begin getting to us. And so we need to put systems in place and structures in place. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, in this church, you're seeing brothers and sisters standing. Lord, their desire is that you may release to them the grace, oh God, to be able to manage their finances well. I want to pray that Jehovah God, you'll visit each and every one of them. And that, Lord, you're going to teach them these principles, our Father. Let it be, my God, that as they, um, they, they plug my Father into these principles that they will begin yielding results, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Results that will be so evident in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that God, even as they get finances beginning today, they will know, my God, how to budget our Father. They will know how to live within their means, oh God. And Father, you will take them to higher heights from one level of glory to another. Master, help them also to create channels of wealth transfer. The Lord Almighty, even as they interact with the wicked, these channels, my God, will cause them, my Father, to earn, my Father, and get the resources from the wicked in the name of Jesus. Be exalted and be magnified, Daddy, because we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, Amen and may the Lord bless you.